uh, that that there is. And so, okay, we, we really we really have to go. You've been yes, sir. Go ahead. And then I'll. Sir, I have a lot of respect for you and your, your service to us. I always have. I started voting in 1982. Right? And, uh, but you don't look that old. Oh, thank you. Um, one of the things that I hear you say is that how important it is as far as all of the you know, thousands of people that are being killed over there. What about the Congo, Sudan? Yes. All right? What about the Muslims that are being killed? All right? Whether or not you're Christian or not, I, I don't mind. You know, that doesn't matter. These are still innocent people that are being Butcher, mm -hmm. we're not doing anything about that. All right, you sit there, and you sit there, and you talk about all the people, all the women that are being raped over there. What about the ten illegal aliens that raped the fourteen-year-old girl that the news isn't hardly even reporting? What about all of those illegal aliens that sit there and break? I mean, they're already breaking our laws. All right, but yet they then they sit there and they kill people with a DWR and thing. What do we do? You know, sit and then they're back here again. All right, that's getting ridiculous. You know, I, I, I'm just getting so frustrated with you people up in Washington. Yeah. All right, yeah. you're not listening to us. You work for us. Yeah. All right. This is for the people, by the people. All right. You sit there and you talk. Like I said, I I cannot imagine what you went through. All right. Not even. And I have so much praise for you for that. But you have lost my respect when it comes with dealing with Mexico and our border. In 86, we had laws put down, all right? But what is it? You know, and, and, and Schumer, uh, to me, uh, and I'm going to say, like, he's a shyster, all right? He's a shyster, all right? In 86, we had laws put down to secure the border. And what do you guys do with it? Oh, we'll, we'll let this one go. We'll let this one go. And now look at where we're at, okay? You talk about Snowden sitting there and, and what he has done. Sir, you took an oath, too, to uphold the Constitution. You're not upholding the Constitution. I want to know one final thing, sir. All right? Like I said, so much respect for you as that young man in the Hanoi Hilton there. All right? I want to know what happened to that young man that stood on those principles back then. Yeah. That said, I will not leave before my time is due. All right? Because what I see going on in Washington is totally disrespectful from our Constitution. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, in the Congo and some of the other African countries where uh, a lot of the killing is going on, there is a significant international effort to try to uh, bring these things to a halt. I think that is. Look, 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 I let you talk, okay? All right. I, can, I know, but I let you talk. Now you should let me talk. That's. Fairly. Okay, thanks. Um, so, that, that there are, are horrendous things going on. I think one of the great regrets that many of us have is that when the slaughter went on in Rwanda that we didn't intervene, but I'm still not exactly sure how we could have intervened there. So, you do have a very valid point. A lot of bad things are going on in the world. But I would argue that if this thing continues to spread, it has the potential to be a direct threat to the national security of the United States. Now, you may not agree with that, but that happens to be my view as I watch the conflict spread throughout the region. Now, you, you made about five points, so let me. All right, okay, go ahead. I understand. I see, I, I thank you, but I would like to point out that border is more secure than it was. When it is, I, I can show you, again, you say no, but I can show you facts and numbers and I can take you down the border and show you the fence and the surveillance and frankly, if you talk to border patrol people, they will tell you that the human sector is largely uh, okay. They will tell you the Tucson sector has a long way to go. Now the head of the border patrol gave me a list, a, not, not a bureaucrat, not someone from the Homeland Security, but the head of the Border Patrol gave me a list. They call, they call it a punch list. And each of the nine sectors of our border and what is necessary to have 100% situational awareness and 90% effective control. Now, that entails sensors, it entails drones, it, in, it includes radars, it includes uh, a thing called the Vader radar, which not only uh, surveils people as they try to cross, but it tracks them back to where they came from. 
And I'd be glad to get you that list, and it's a cost of about $46 billion. We are spending $18 billion a year on border security today. Now, in 1986, you referred to, we had 4,000 Border Patrol. Today, we have 20,000 Border Patrol. You can't say that there hasn't been any improvement and know anything about what an additional 16,000 people will do. Now, is the border secure? No. Can we make it secure? Yes. If we employ this list that the head of the Border Patrol gave us for all nine sectors, I promise you, that if we pass this legislation, if after five years we don't have that parameters that I told you about, there's going to be another $2 billion spent and we will have the governor of Arizona and people from uh, various border states uh, as to how we need to spend the additional $2 billion. So I, I, I want to assure you that this thing has 700 miles of additional fence it has a doubling, 20,000 more Border Patrol in it, and I'll be glad to get you uh, the information. And when I think you see it, I think you'll be convinced that it is very, very, I think, a way to get 90% to effective control over our border. And finally, I just want to just come back one second. They, if there's a demand for drugs, these sophisticated drug cartels may find ways to get those drugs across our border if there's a big enough demand. I was in Colombia, the country of Colombia, they showed me a submarine, a submarine that travels beneath the water taking drugs up. And I said, hey, I said, how much does this cost? He said, they got engineers for that, that, cost them five million dollars. I said, five million dollars? The guy said, they made 15 million dollars in one run. So, my, my friend, we have to address the issue of drugs as well if we truly want to be able to secure our border. I thank you for your passion, and I thank for your early, I thank for you for your early admiration. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Yes, sir. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you segue into the second major portion of your talk, or of the presentation today, I would like to uh, tell you that for the past three or four weeks, I've read Senate 744. And I've concentrated a little bit on one particular portion, the Border Security, Section 1100. And I can tell you right now, this is just informational for you only, and I'll <coughs> preface a question with this. And that is, in those small sections, it's a very tiny portion of the overall act, which you, the Senate, passed on the 26th of June very small section that I have reviewed intensely. It is fraught with ambu ambiguities, disconnects, and sometimes outright misprints. Okay, you have a date in there to effect a, a change, a trigger of 2104. 2104. It's only, I'm sorry, Senator, but I can show you the page. That's right. I, I every page. All you have to do, all you have to do is go to text S744, and you can read right down through all of it. And I've taken, and I've, and I, and I hope that you will. My question is, will you be scrubbing this in earnest between now and the time that you take the next step of the legislative process, which is to pass it on to the House? If I had known you'd been here today, I wouldn't have posted a letter to you yesterday on this very same subject. I have three full pages just on the first seven segments of Section 1100, Border Security, and it's fraught with problems. Okay. Could I just say, first of all, thank you for your interest. Thank you for the incredible work that you've done. I would like to make sure my person gets your name so that I can directly read what you've sent me, and obviously you've done a great deal of work on it. I do not, <laughs> I've read the bill too, and I, I disagree, but I we're more than eager to examine the aspects of it that you are pointing out. And thank you for your for your interest and involvement in the issue. I'm very grateful. Available online. I, look, I, I want to say that, that there should give you the card and uh, 
and make sure you get, oh, you got that, okay. So, uh, I'll be back. I just wanted, very importantly, to have the chance to hear from you and discuss the issues and let you hear from me. I understand that a significant number of our fellow citizens are opposed to any involvement in Syria. I understand that. And I hope that you have learned something from my viewpoint, and I have learned from your viewpoint. And one of the, my, the, my major takeaway here is that we need to listen some more, and if we have an argument to be made, then we are going to have to do a better job. And it seems to me that one of the ways to do that is for the President of the United States to go in the Oval Office and talk directly to the American people. Only the President of the United States can do that. So, and we have a lot of work to do. And I want to thank my friends who are so passionate about the tragedies that are taking place in Syria. I want to thank my friends who are deeply concerned about another Iraq and another tragedy of the loss. I go out to Walter Reed all the time. I, I know, and you know, how tragic it, it has been. Arizona has sacrificed so much in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I want to pledge to you that I won't send a young American into harm's way in Syria. I want to pledge that to you. But I also appreciate I also appreciate your input, and I will take that back as part of the decision-making process. It's my obligation to you to have the conversation with you, and I thank you for coming, and we will do it again, and, and for I finally again thank our friends from the vision-impaired community who have come here today to that beautiful lab. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me go outside. I know. Yep. Yep. We got that on video. She never answered your second question. That's no, what I was going to ask for you. Why would he? I'm amazed. 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 I'm Unless you're going to do it right, don't do it. I agree. I'm also tired of this comparison to Iraq. Back to reality. Yeah, it's not a good well, one. That's, good. that's why I compare what you're doing to. Do you want a second civil war? Do you want another world war? That's the big picture. That's where we're going. Oh, hey. So it's going to be Iran and Russia going to defend us in some way. Oh, yeah, I know. Then the Chinese are going to start with this say, no more money for you. Thank you.